can look at things like when uh, Johnny Russell was at his peak, and he was better when he was actually defended by two defenders instead of one, because they would have to have a little spacing, and he could force them into a spot where he could just cut through them. And what Tommy did last night was essentially maneuvered those defenders with him. I would love to see him do that more. Manipulated, perhaps. Yes. Back at it again with another shade of blue. We are the KC Soccer Journal. My name is Cody Bradley. Thad Bell and Robert Russert are here with me. Sunday after the season opener, boys, we survived with a point in Houston. One to one against the Dynamo. Happy to be here with you on this lovely Sunday afternoon. Robert, why were you late? Why did you hold us up today? Well, Cody, I tell you, man, I pulled up to Thad's house here, you know, and I wanted to park nearby, of course. And uh, this guy comes out and says, hey, you know, you got to park down there where it's 50 bucks. So, uh, yeah, I had to walk all the way oh, up no. here. <laughs> it was a shot at the current. That's what that story was. <laughs> By the way, they just sent out the parking plan that included things other than the $50 I'm parking. Sure. <laughs> no, literally, like today. They yeah. did. Yeah. I just I saw that on the yeah. way here. That was pretty interesting that they did that. All the different ways that you can get to the stadium. So, one-to-one draw that we are going to be happy enough with. But they were rusty. It was a rusty first game. It looked like they were playing their first game of the season. I don't know if Houston maybe because they had that game on Tuesday, were a little more sharp or a little more comfortable with the ball at their feet at the beginning of that game. But, Robert, they were trying to and failing to play out of the back for that entire first half. Yeah, and the thing is, too, Houston was missing a fair amount of players. But anyway, yeah, I mean, there were repeated times where uh, it was very early in the game and uh, David slack channeled out to us that yeah it's already early in the game and here we are struggling to put, play the ball out of the back and that was a bit of a pattern for sure and we got lucky with an offside call one time at least and uh yeah it's, it's something that we can't have continuing if we're going to be successful this season i wanted to make fun of david for being the irrational fan for sending that message two minutes into the season <laughs> he's already mad but he kind of nailed it. <laughs> that first thought he had ended up being kind of the story of the first half and what a lot of the tweets were about that. I think it was more than just the first half, though. I mean, well, it kind of yeah. went through everything. So I think David did prognosticate that. Is that the right way to say that? Prognosticate? <laughs> I'm definitely not the one to tell you if that was right. Uh, Robert? That is our walking <laughs> dictionary, folks, by the way, in case you didn't know. He's always looking up unique words. So Prognosticate is not a unique <laughs> word. <laughs> I think actually it is. <laughs> so Thad. Yes, sir. Why were they not able to get the ball up the field last night? I think they were sloppy. I think still the first game not being great, even though you have mostly people who have played together before. Uh, Houston is not, even, despite the not overwhelming fan presence in Houston, it is still not an easy place to play. Despite Houston not having all of their players we would not have given Sporting that same slack if they were not playing well, right? So why, we're, I'm not giving it to Houston. So Houston played fairly well. But, yeah, Sporting was very sloppy in their passing, just everywhere. Everywhere on the field, I would agree with that. Everywhere. Defense, midfield, forwards, fans. <laughs> well, we've got to give Houston a bit of credit because they were high Not for their fans <laughs> in the stadium because well, right. there were none. They were pressing uh, pretty well and take away options. Uh, I think we get in the habit where we're in such a mode of play that sporting plays that it's what we do. We spread the ball around to the wings and we just sometimes forget that we're in the back and things can be dangerous back there. We need to be a little quicker getting the ball out or showing a little bit into those half spaces where we can then get the ball out of the back. Yeah, and again, I wasn't trying to give Houston any slack there. I mean, that's, that's exactly the point that I was making was they get credit we're not going to give them yeah. – we're not going to, like, say, oh, well, we should have been better because they were missing a few guys. You know, we had guys who were not completely uh, healthy either. Well, they did control most of the match. I'm not going to use the word dominated, although it kind of felt like it. But 61% possession, 12 shots to Sporting KC shit, six. <laughs> what was that? That was, that was, <laughs> that was a Freudian rough one slip. there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to just say how I thought they played last night is what was <laughs> about to come out of my mouth. Six shots on goal to Sporting KC's two. Over 200 passes more than Sporting Kansas City. Higher passing accuracy. More corners. The only thing Sporting 
had the better on was crosses, which amounted to not very much. How many shots on goal did they get off of those crosses, Cody? I don't know. Do you count the goal that was called back? Because that was off of a cross. So, I mean, anytime a team has more crosses than the other team, especially sporting, it's not a good thing. That's not really sporting's game, crossing the ball into our trees in the box or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, not a good stat there. And then, Cody, what was the XG? Was there any for sporting <laughs> Kansas City? MLS has their XG at point three. That is pretty sad. And foot mob had it even worse though, I think. Yeah, foot mob had a one XG for Houston and a point one six for sporting. Yikes. That's near enough domination, I think. You expect the home team to be the better team. It was also their home opener. There's a lot of factors that went into it. They'd already played one game. There are a lot of factors it was in Houston's favor despite them missing some good players. But their stadium was empty. It was for a home opener. It wasn't empty, but for a yeah. home opener. I know, that's just sad. But it is. It is uh, and they have a good team. They had a good team last year. I know. They, were actually, they won a trophy last year. What trophy would that be? Even if MLS is trying to erase that point. <laughs> yeah, does it still count? <laughs> well, yes, of course it does count. U.S. Open Cup. Yes, 2023 U.S. Open Cup. The Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. The last MLS Open Cup winner ever. That would be really sad. It'd be very sad. I, uh... I do think they're, I mean, it sounds like they're still going to have some MLS teams in there and MLS teams should still be the better ones, but I just don't like the fact that the way they're working this. Anyway, we've already ranted about U.S. Open Cup previously. You know who I really like, and not just because of his name, is Coco Carasquilla. He's a great player. But I do like his name. Yes, absolutely phenomenal name. Good hair, too. Easily identifiable on the field. Such a great brand there that Houston has in, in Coco. Total package. Name, <laughs> hair, identity on the field. And, oh, yeah, he actually played well. Yeah, he had a couple passes that just one pass cut apart most of the team. He set up the goal with that one long cross, but he also set up the one that was called back with a little give and go for with Artur, who just blew that best chance of the half right at the start of the game. Yeah, it's easy, you know, when a runner doesn't go with you, so he maybe should have finished that off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vermees had some thoughts on the defense. Did you think, whether on those goals or otherwise, what did you think of the defense last night, Thad? I will be on the positive side and say the defense wasn't terrible. I mean, they were decent most of the game. They did leave some, leave some runners out there. Uh, teams make mistakes, especially early in the season. All the games I've seen so far in the last week of – MLS has looked sloppy to me anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in some fairness, everybody's looking not at their peak. Of all the games I've seen, there's probably I'm probably there's probably there's some games out there where the teams looked absolutely magnificent and I didn't see them. That's fair. But of the ones I've watched, every game seemed to at least be sloppy. Well, the truthful theory is that attacking on the soccer side should be behind the defense at this point in the season. And I think that's what we saw for sure. Sporting's attack wasn't up to snuff. The defense, the midfield, the front three, uh, they were organized pretty well in there, clogging up the middle and forcing Houston to go wide. They did get split a couple of times, you know, but that's going to happen a few times throughout a match. But they were pretty well organized there. Rosero was good in emergency defending. And, uh, you know, we didn't look that bad. 1.0 XG for the other team. That's not bad either. For a good attacking team. So, yeah. I mean, that's what Houston was really good at last year. Minus Herrera. Yeah. Minus him. On the road. That's a tough team. It's always a gritty match when we play them. And against a team that, uh, you know, killed them in the playoffs last year. Pretty much similar stats. And, again, in uh, any team, if, if a team had come into sporting and stole a 1-1 draw, even if they had been totally dominated, we would be blaming sporting for that. Yeah. So if we go into Houston and steal a 1-1 draw, and then we're blaming sporting for that. It's kind of the way fandom works sometimes, but trying to be fair, that is Houston. Just, just the pessimistic fan at heart, you know? That's little, just how that goes. A little negativity. I'm trying to inject a little positivity, especially we had scored the first goal of the season 220 minutes earlier than we did last year. <laughs> yes, good <laughs> shout. 220 minutes. Thanks to Mike Kuhn for that stat because I wasn't looking it up. Mike stat. Mike stat. Well, you need that sound right there. 
That was what was good about that. It was I just freestyled the sound and there was no recording. I had no branding. It was agreed. <laughs> Mike Stat by down the byline. Dun, 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 dun. Mike Stat. But again, it, it is one of those. If it if the score was reversed and it was in Kansas City, we'd be blaming Kansas City for having blown that game. Now, fl- flip it in the other way, and we're blaming Kansas City for not having won that game. Well, I'm not. I think. There are fans that are doing that. Yes. But, yeah, Houston blew that. Missed chances. Draw on the road, win at home is the goal, right? You know, I want to win everywhere, but if you <laughs> if you win at home. The realistic you draw on goal, the road, sorry. Yes. <laughs> and you, you add a few other wins in there somewhere, you're going to be near the top of the table, and you're going to have a legitimate playoff, not a kind of the bottom end of the playoff. If it had not existed two years ago, you wouldn't have been on that kind of thing, you know. I think, Don't jinx us that. I think Houston is a top of top half of the table team and going on the road and getting a draw at a top half of the table team. That's fine. That's Fourth place do. last season. So Nothing wrong with that. Except I of course do understand what a lot of the fans are are looking at. They did not look good. There was they were not sharp. There's a lot to improve on. So I understand that entirely. The result is good how they got the result could have been a little prettier. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, but then you could even go another step. Man, they didn't even play good, and they still got this result. What happens when they do look good? When they do Probably figure this stuff out? won't get the result. <laughs> <laughs> no, they will get a better result. Is, okay, okay. Is what that looks like. No, I, I agree. <laughs> so am I the contrarian today? I don't know. Are you? What do you got for <laughs> Because, us? you know, I think a lot of fans' concerns is that we saw the sporting that were used to seeing minus Scotty Kinda, you know, methodical, matriculating, if you will, the ball down the field. Now who's nothing, using the fancy words? <laughs> nothing terribly <laughs> dynamic besides, you know, Tommy and you know, we'll talk a little bit more about the young guys when they came in. But it was all just kind of predictable, methodical. It wasn't a really a lot of um fashion to it, a lot of uh skill. style. Style. There you go. Flair. Yeah, exactly. So many good words being used right now. <laughs> I know Cody was like he's like looking at Robert, looking at Thad, looking at Robert, looking at Thad. He's Once he to got to methodical, I was like, "Whoa, well done." Let's talk about Alan Polito a little bit. Subbed out in the 59th minute. For me, says he was not 90 minutes fit along with Johnny Russell. But that's our man that we need to be scoring goals. And Robert, he had a couple looks and either got the ball stuck at his feet or just couldn't get a shot off. The best moments he had were what we always talk about with him, where he has to come back deep into the field and does some good hold-up play. Then all of a sudden, look at that, the ball goes forward, but then our <laughs> our striker's not there to get it because he was like the reason the ball went forward. So I don't know, what was your analysis of Polito's well, first I think match? his best opportunity was look kind of like a, oh, what the heck, I'll just shoot this one, and it went just far of the... Uh, left post and just outside of it. So that was his best opportunity of the night. Doesn't say a whole lot. But and I uh, think that was just his first shot. Like it was like, I, I'm just going to get involved. Right, exactly. Like shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, his movement off the ball needs to be a little more dynamic, I think, in the box, uh, creating opportunities. We know the wingers are the guys who create a lot of opportunities and get a lot of the goals for this team. But I think he just needs to maybe find some better spots. Um, and once he gets his fitness in, he'll find those spots. And his skill on the ball will also be tighter once he gets that fitness too because – Tell you what, you wear out quickly, as as we know, not being in shape playing soccer. <laughs> Definitely, and, and I think there's a lot of the uh, he's they're not in shape. Vermees worked to not overwork them, right? And going into this, he he, and we'll I know we'll talk about the younger guys, the subs a little bit, uh, but that was part of the plan was he was going to make subs because he had guys he wanted to get into the game and he thought could do something different and change that. So I think. Also with Polito, you said like his best shot was that early one. I think his best chance was one he didn't take because he dribbled into the box. Didn't even get a shot off. And it's like old Polito, I think, would have sailed that to the far post. It may have missed. It may have hit the post. It may have went in. It may have been stopped by the by the keeper or the defender. But he would have taken it, and he didn't take that one. And it felt like, why are you not being bold and creative and doing that? I don't know if that's... I don't anticipate that to be Polito going forward, but it just felt like in this game he was not at his best. Pusillanimous. <laughs> that's not how it's pronounced. Pusillanimous? Was that what we, we checked Pusillanimous. this earlier? Yeah, that's better. The second temp was better. Yes. What does pusillanimous mean? 
uh, showing a lack of courage or determination. And that's what I saw in that moment and a couple other moments where I thought he had a chance to take the shot and he wasn't, he didn't do it. I felt he could have been braver in taking that shot at that moment. The word pussy is in that word and it means like what we would use to use that word for. Where do you think it came from? <laughs> you learn something new every day. And again, I'm sure somebody will correct me that it's probably not the origin of that word, but <laughs> I don't care. So I think Polito struggles, you know, like you guys said, fitness, but also it's, you know, we know strikers, guys, you know, they have to have that confidence and he just may not be there yet. He just needs one to go off his shin and into the goal and then he'll be like, okay, I got this. And, you know, he'll yeah. go on fire. Because he only had one in preseason, if I remember correctly. And was that, uh, was that against the one at the end of the season after his contract last year? So, uh, but in preseason was the one against like the college team or, I think it was. So he wasn't sharp even in preseason. But again, I'm not super worried about that because all strikers are streaky. I mean, they don't like score a goal every other game or every third game consistently like that. They score a few here, a couple there. And the next thing you know, they're doing great and everybody forgets about the stretch where they didn't score anything. Yeah. But we need somebody else to score those goals. And today or yesterday it was Eric. Tommy. Well, they brought in Willie Agata. What did you think of Willie's shift? Well, I'm glad Peter inserted Willie into the game. But, um, yeah, I don't – I was not real happy with <laughs> Willie's hold-up play. He wasn't – he was letting the ball get away from Willie too much. <laughs> Yeah, the announcer was nice to Agata on that one play where she's like, well, maybe he was in two minds and he meant to maybe hold the ball and take a touch, but then he was thinking about playing it back. Yeah, So, yeah, she was kind of nice to him there. But, yeah, Willie did not have the uh, skill that we saw in preseason with, what, six goals? Um, yeah, but, but like three of those confidence. were PKs, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, well, yeah, still he's the highest goal scorer in preseason. It's something, it's something. But, um, you know, Willie's going to do a better job. He'll get there. He's still, I remember, coming back from injury as well. So That was the most discouraging part of this game for me was that Polito did not look good. And then it was like, oh, okay. This, you know, before knowing whether this is an excuse or not, before knowing he was taken out because he's not 90 minutes fit, I was like, oh, okay, Vermees is giving him a short leash this year. He wants to push him with Willie Agata off the bench. And then, so that was good to see. And then Willie comes off the bench and he looked bad. Yeah, I... I mean, I don't think that was the best spot for Willie either because he kind of needs people to build up to him a little bit more, I think, it was when he's at his best. Uh, he, yes, when he's, he is at his best when he can just tap the ball across the line. <laughs> I think that is when most strikers are at their best, but he seems to have a knack for it. No, there was one moment where, uh, I don't know if it was, I think it was a free throw, where he played the ball into Willie in the center of the field and Willie you know, had like two or three guys around him. Willie played the ball back to Afrifa, and they got on the run a little bit. And I think that's the dynamic that we're going to see with Agata, with Vargas, with Afrifa, you know, working together probably often late in the game. So that's that was a bright light there. We're going to take a break and then come back and talk about those subs. All right. Five subs on the night for Peter Vermees. Thad, were you surprised that Afrifa was the first one off the bench? I had asked you this question last week in our preview, and I think we were all expecting Vargas maybe to be the first guy off the bench. I think we were, but I think we were also expecting it to be a little bit later in the game. Uh, this was a little bit earlier than I expected, which yeah. I'm okay with, but uh, Afrifa and Agata coming in, you know, kind of a good pairing there. They both can do the... Tap in in the box. Uh, Frifa has been playing well out wide and has, at, you know, at least MLS experience where Vargas did not. So it was his first MLS experience. So I, I could understand him getting a little less time. In that last preseason game, Frifa started for Russell on the wing and then Vargas came in later for Shallowy. So not really terribly surprising. But uh, did you guys see the moment when Afrifa blew by that guy on the wing, just played the ball by him, just ran by him? <laughs> that the was athleticism. Nice. That's what we were waiting on. It definitely. Sounds like a little video I watched recently. That was well done, Cody. Good job. Yeah, thank you. It was. Of note about those two players is that Marino's Janice was with SKC2, Thad. Not even traveling anymore. He was down at Swope playing against the UMKC Ruse. 
I guess, are we conceding defeat on this U-22 experiment with Johnny's? I don't think we ever concede defeat until the decision is made to move somebody. However, well, but we're two plus years in on a three year deal and there's been a resounding lack of contribution. Resounding lack of contribution and, and growth, a lack of growth. Exactly where I was going, Cody. Very good. Great minds. Um, I think he is essentially the exact same player that showed up two yeah. years ago and you know what you're going to get from him. And he is a little bit, crazy and you know unpredictable and you never know but he has skill but doesn't show up in the game by the way did you see johan Krause's goal the other day <laughs> oh, Lord. yeah speaking I, of crazy in I, the game i saw him tweet that he has scored four games in a row yeah go johan can we bring him back no no but i think with johnny's if this is has to be the the last chance at a wake-up call before he is done if you're not traveling and two young guys who have no MLS experience are starting or getting time over you, you need to either make some huge contribution, huge step, or you go back and find a team in Cyprus. Well, let's talk about what you said. We know what we're getting from John East, and then you mentioned unpredictable. So the problem with John East is, is yeah, he's good on the ball. He's got good ball skills. He can beat eh. people one-on-one, but oftentimes it's going sideways. Okay, and then he's on the ball so long that the everybody else on the team's like, okay, what am I supposed to be doing while you're on the ball? So yeah. that's a bad, unpredictable. <laughs> and I think the thing about a free fan Vargas is they're direct. They're much more direct than he is. They've got you know the athleticism, the speed, and the physicality that Johnny's does not have. And I think in the game like last night, where a team is dominating possession on you, having guys that can break through the defense right. and, and into the back to you know into the open area is exactly what you need that's why you that's that's why you should have teams that have different types of players on there so that they can right. have different solutions for different types of games a lot of issues that i've had with Ramiz in the past is if you take out a guy you bring in a, a like-minded guy same guy just a little less quality a little fresher it's not really different i, I understand why they do that sometimes and, I, and it's not necessarily wrong because he's been reasonably successful over most of his career as a coach but that's why you do like to have those guys like Vargas and Afrifa that can just bust out there like Gerso could. Like sometimes Gerso wouldn't start. He'd come in late in the game or, you know, 60, 70 minutes into the game, and he would just be marauding the backfield. Can we talk about the Tommy goal a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Tommy has that element to his game. You know, yes. and, and you saw it in the goal last night. He, yeah, he's a little bit, hey, I've got the ball. Okay, I'm here. Oh, I'll go here now. But he knew exactly what he was doing when he was going at that defender. Uh, he was forcing that defender toward the back post, and he knew, I'm just going to slot it back to the near post. And, yeah, perfect. I know. he. I, I heard people say that he was just lucky that all these defenders were around him and didn't close him down, didn't close the space. He maneuvered that space. I thought, oh, yeah, I for thought sure. he manufactured that space really well. Mm -hmm. Now, there's uh, obviously a little bit of luck in that because one of those defenders had not bought into something quite right. He, they would have just been in his way. But he managed that space because he just kept moving in a way that they all had to kind of maneuver and follow him and almost escort him in the way. And then the shot to the back – was well timed. It could have failed. It could have been blocked. It could have been, you know, because he basically nutmegged the defender that, you know, and went to the back post. Yeah. I mean, when you said escort, you're right, because there was one defender who was goal side and they were like, okay, he'll take care of him. We're just going to force Tommy to him. But Tommy, the whole time, was like, uh huh, that's what I want you to do. Right. <laughs> it's like, you know, it, you can look at things like when uh, Johnny Russell was at his peak and he was better when he was actually defended by two defenders instead of one because they would have to have a little spacing and he could force them into a spot where he could just cut through them. And what Tommy did last night was essentially maneuvered those defenders with him. I would love to see him do that more. Manipulated, perhaps. Yes. we got a lot of M-words today. Manipulated, <laughs> methodical marauders. I don't disagree, but, but also just none of the defenders... Like, you're like, oh, he made them escort him. I don't really know what that means. None of them stepped up. All somebody had to do was just step up. They were just, it is weird that they were running with him, and it was poor defense. And I will say, just the fact that that shot got through there, he just kind of fired it through traffic, and I think it was a little bit fortunate. Well, it, when it, you go at someone at pace, like Tommy was doing, right. forcing him backwards, that defender doesn't always remember where he's at. You know, he's just saying, okay, I'm, I've got pressure on the ball here. Yes, Those guys are there. 
he maybe he was waiting for them to do something. Right. Well, <laughs> but again, so that's what I'm saying. It's it is poor defending if four defenders yes. are right there yeah. and they're all Ultimately, going. I yes. hope the other guy does something here. It was it was not good defending. I'm sure it'll be a discussion with uh, them this week. It was well taken. You can't score if you don't shoot. He was being positive, driving into the box. All of that. All of that is very true. There is sometimes with Eric Tommy though. I'm going to use basketball as an example. You know, sometimes there's that guy on the court, the point guard, and he's just, he's maybe really fast, and he's running around doing all these things. He's keeping the ball, and he's getting into dangerous spots, and then it looks like he's stuck, and then all of a sudden he just throws up some crazy shot, and it goes in, and it's like, oh, well, what the hell? How did, Michael how did made a career do? of that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> also, Kai Kamara. Tommy reminds me of that a little bit. That is unfair on this goal because I do think this was a well-taken goal. It was. You, you can be fortunate and have a well-taken goal. But there was a little bit of he didn't have really anywhere else to go. There wasn't necessarily a pass in front of him forward. So he just kept dribbling. I think he saw everything was about to close down. He didn't really know what he where he was going. And he just kind of picks his head up and fires it. I disagree. I agree with As Robert. a player, as a player who is on the ball like that and you see the space. So that's what makes some players different. They see the space, they know how to manipulate it, how to manipulate the defenders, and I think that's exactly what Eric Tommy was doing. He knew exactly okay. what he was doing and he made them do what they did. Now, the defenders could have done something different and different and better, but and given up a dangerous free kick. Yeah. And that that's a very true, very good point there. But again, I felt like in this case, I'm, I'm not going to give Tommy like credit in, in every single case of this sort of thing, but I believe in this case, the way he ran, you can turn and you make that defender. They can't step into you. They can't just step into you because they'll foul you and get a card and everything else. And then the other guys around him were trying to limit his space. But again, they couldn't do much because of the way he turned his body. Right, there you go. The way he was turning his body. There, there were those subtle movements. I yes. think there were drops of the shoulder. He wasn't just... I'm running into the box no, right, right now. It yeah. was no, it wasn't a straight run in he, there. He looked as though he was about to do or figuring something out. And yeah. th- and that's what I meant earlier. And maybe, maybe this is a way better way to say it. But that's what I meant earlier by he was manipulating or maneuvering or he was essentially forcing those defenders to escort him because they couldn't do anything. They didn't know where he was going to go. And then when he got the shot, it, it was through traffic by being through one defender essentially. Yeah. And he timed that shot well. So I, I almost hate to use the term through traffic because to, to, through traffic to me means there's three or four bodies there and it kind of slipped through. In this case, he timed it. It could have failed because it still would have... It, nutmegging a player isn't easy, especially when you're trying to shoot and put it on goal. All, all too often those go into a leg or a stray anyway. And the whole stadium, the Houston defenders are like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Outside yeah. of that goal, what did you think of Eric Tommy? As the center attacking mid this year. I think that outside of that goal, there was still more need from him. Um, Yeah. I just, again, everything wasn't going well as far as passing and all that. So a lot of connections weren't matching up. But once he got at least in a good spot, he took it. We were a little right-centric because Tommy was playing on the right side like you had talked about on our last pod, Thad. So that, that was a good thing that he was there. Second half, when we got our subs in, we went back to being more left centric. So, if uh, if you look at the channels, the way the attack went, it was essentially very left, very right, yeah, no middle. It was all the wings. That's sporting. typical sporting, though, isn't it? it? It is, but you hope that there's more of that when you have a Polito there and healthy. That's uh, again, it, you can't always look at one game and see trends. Uh, it's sporting has been very wing oriented. But you can hope that with Polito healthy, it becomes more of a balanced attack. But that will change depending on the team you're facing in the game states. So, Just a shout for Radoya. I meant to mention this when we were talking about Polito getting that ball stuck under his feet. Best pass of the game was Nemanja Radoya setting him up for that. That was beautiful. Rado. Rado. Tamelia cited him uh, before this game as, you know, just – being so good. Of course, Tim almost always cites the sixes as being so good. So <laughs> a reminder. Just the, pay, the announcer for Apple got Rodoya's name like every time. Radoya. Something like that. <laughs> I, honestly, I try not to pay attention to the announcers, uh, except when I need some piece of information, and usually they don't yeah. have it. 
Reminder, Rodoya is one of the three DPs. Yes, at least for now. We haven't talked about the, I should have put this on the rundown for preparing for the show, and I apologize, Cody. That's my fault, and I apologize to you. Cody is seething inside, yes. I know, Not that that's a point I hit on a lot or anything like that. But. Uh, again, I was I was running late to getting back. I was trying to get it's the hard table to coordinate cleaned off. four you're people good, and do good. this, you know. Oh, come on. The, uh, the roster construction came out uh, Friday, I think, and on it it had the three DPs, Rodoya being one of them, um, Russell, and Polito, was that right? No, Shallowy. You're right. Polito. Yes. <laughs> Very good. You did pay attention, Cody. Appreciate it. Peter had pointed out that that was uh, more or less a, he didn't say who, but it was a mechanism to eat up dollars without using cap space so that in the summer, if they want to add a DP, they can buy one of them down and they've not used up that cap space for the first half of the year. They'll have more leeway in the second half of the year for when they want to do something. Smart. The Houston goal was a really well-taken team goal, but I think the defense overall on the night was was pretty strong. We've kind of touched on it a little bit already. Houston is a good team and they score some goals and this is a road game and they held them to one. The goal, I mean, you know, it was a perfectly flighted ball over the top. You know, Davis Coco. is where he's supposed to be. He didn't have time to get there to shut the, the cross down. So well done by Houston. Um, the marking in the box, though, how can you let anyone run to your back post completely unmarked? Yeah, Leibold, right? Leibold, Fontes, either one. And on the other Voltaire, earlier maybe in even. The year, <laughs> earlier, earlier in the game, Davis also. So. Yeah, yeah. It, it is one of the weaknesses on the sporting defense. They're good until they're not. Yeah. They're on it, and then they just make one mistake. I bet Houston fans, well, whichever ones might actually talk about the game, might be saying the same thing. Oh, they were pretty good until they just didn't stop that one guy. Yeah, yeah. It's a game of mistakes, right? It is. Yeah. Exactly how game, how goals are scored. You just got to limit the mistakes and hope that when you have a mistake, it gets a VARD. How were the referees? <laughs> 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 Oh, man, wasn't that so weird that they subbed out that assistant referee? Hamstring, man. Come on. I know, but until I saw that, I was like, oh, my God, what is going on? <laughs> Did this guy make a call that, and they're, like, cutting him because he made a wrong call or something? <laughs> oh, that would be Well, hilarious. overall, I mean, how many games did you guys watch, you know, this weekend so far? Probably three and a half-ish. It seems I, like I these watched, referees. Go ahead. I watched uh, the whole hour plus of... The whip around show before yeah. our game. Yeah, it seems like these guys were hesitant to make calls in some ways. Did you guys see that trend at all? Or yeah, I, I could see that. Yeah, and again, I don't think they're doing bad. I mean, because yeah. they're refs, and everybody complained about the other refs anyway. So I don't think these guys were doing bad. Me they're neither. just not the highest level refs, and that's that's okay for right now. They depended on v- VAR often. In, in big decisions, so well they've depended on VAR previously with the good refs, and they fucking screwed that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. One to one on match day one. One point, half of our total from the first ten games last year. Did we get three last? Something time? like that. Did we get like three draws in that? Three first draws. Time? Okay, so we're a third of the way there. Yeah. So basically, we're gonna win the whole league this year. You know, it's a great start. And, hey, some teams that were amazing last year have bad starts so far this year, too. But it's one game, man. It's one game, no matter which way you look at it. It is one game. One game, and next up is Philadelphia. And we are going to talk about that game after the break. One game down, Philadelphia Union coming to CMP next Saturday, another 7.30 p.m. kickoff. Philadelphia drew 2-2 with Chicago. I actually caught... Quite a bit of that game. It was a really good match to watch. Did you see any of that, Robert? Chicago actually might have a team this year. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's like shaking his head. Nope. And they got good jerseys. Okay. Side note, Seattle's jerseys are the best. I like it, LAFCs as well. Yeah. Oh, that was such a good jersey matchup. Those are like two of it the was. two it of was. the best jerseys right there going head to head. That's like astounded by this. Well, no, no. It just reminded me. I didn't see any of the game, but I saw like a tweet showing Ilya. Oh, my God. What the hell? Okay, okay. I cornrows, believe- fine, but get rid of the headband. We that made it to just, segment yeah, three. Cornrows, fine? Like, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Ilya? <laughs> I know he's out of character, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, like, it seems like every year he's been gone, his hair got longer, a little bit wilder. I mean, he still seems hey, to be an amazingly nice guy. He lives in L.A. I mean, come on. 
He's bold. I like it. He's changing up his look. I appreciate that. Although I'm not a fan of the cornrows. It doesn't drop look, the headband. It doesn't look like cornrows. Him. Drop the headband. You look like a little bow wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I sure. can't believe we made it to segment three before we. I just about wish it. I had that much hair. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> it would not be in cornrows if I did though. <laughs> Cody's looking at us like, can we just talk about something else? Now? I was upset that you put the image of cornrows on your head in our listeners' minds. Well. Fortunately, most of them don't realize what I look like <laughs> at this point until we do more videos. And I say that fortunately is they really don't need to know what I look like. Robert, what can you tell us about Philadelphia this year? Well, Philadelphia this year is same Philadelphia as they've been for the last couple of years. And the thing about them, I think they are the team that we wish sporting was in many ways. Oh, man, I feel that actually. Yeah, yeah they've they've. Been strong at youth development, which insanely you know, strong. Arguably, we have not. They have a solid defense that's going to keep them in every game, and uh, you know they got some scorers who can put the ball in the back of the net. Just they're like sporting in that they're, uh, and this is from MLSsoccer.com that their match winners aren't as good as the big spending match winners, mm-hmm. Bawanga, you know, Messi, if you will, etc. So we're very similar, but they've just upped us a little bit with the development and their defense is a little more consistent. The union are going to be in every match they play. But they drew at home against Chicago. Yeah, but I think Chicago's just a better team this year than they've been. But And it's first game. So come on, guys. We've been saying it the whole time. First game, one game. True. But Chicago, I mean, Chicago can't be good until they prove they are. So I can't believe they're good until they actually have a good streak. And they got Shakiri, So there you go. I do like the union. Jim Curtin is, it'll actually be a battle of the two longest tenured head coaches in MLS. I think Vermees has like five years on him. Yet but another still. similarity. Hmm. Yeah, do, exactly. Do you feel a kindred relationship with Curtin? Because he's a ginger. Oh, that's what you meant. Okay. <laughs> I do have a lot no, of respect he's for tall. him. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, yeah, just looks. No, that's a, that's a good team. And Robert, I think you made a good point about they're going to be in every game. Yeah. Because I think Jim Curtin has that, you know what you're getting with them year in and year out. It's a system. They're organized, and they do it without those big names at any individual spot. So we calling for another 2-2 draw then? Is that where we're going with this? Well, if we're equally matched with the union this year, (laughs) then we're going to be in a good spot. Oh, wait. I didn't say we were equally matched. I did not say that. (laughs) Kind of what a draw usually means, but that only means it for one game. So I, I... but yeah, no, Philly is a, is a team that I do respect for pretty much everything they do. Even a cool stadium. I don't know. I haven't been there. Have you? Heck yeah, I was there for the Open Cup win. Yeah? Man, how far the Union have come since then. Those were like dark days for them. It was the start of getting better. Yeah. I have Philadelphia Union uh, scarves in the basement. I'm like kind it. of a history nerd, and I love the Revolutionary War. But I, I don't think I like the name. I want to like the name Philadelphia Union, but it doesn't do it for me. I like the Sons of Ben. That's their Agreed. ultra section. That's a very good team name. Yeah. I have a lot of uh, affection for Philadelphia. It's where the Marine Corps was born. Would you prefer really? the Philadelphia Crackheads? You know, Liberty Whoa. Bell? Is that what you <laughs> Liberty Bell, Crack. Okay. Cody. That was not always cracked up to be for damn sure. I need a I need a bad joke sound for that one. Wah, wah, wah. Media day on Tuesday, guys. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, expect content from us, correct, Cody? What, what might the fans get from us from that? We should probably plan for this. I was hoping that we could do that today, especially when we were all going to be here. David, you're not here. We got some interviews with Leibold and Johnny East last year. And yeah, they make it, it. It's all set up pretty easy for us to just be there and get some content. But yep. we should we should kind of have a game plan of who we want to talk to, what we want to get from them. Maybe we'll talk to two French players. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> Man, Cody is just taking dings here. And there. Yeah, People listening may not even realize them all. <laughs> the uh, they will have players out around the field like they have done in the past, but I've already asked if we set up inside, we can bring players in for five. That's why we minutes. love you, Thad. Always good to plan, right, Cody? It is always good to plan. If only I could get you guys to do that. <laughs> 
I plan, but it's like the three minutes before we start. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Winging everything, man. That, that by definition is not planning. So, you know, hey, listeners, readers, if you want somebody in particular for us to talk to, uh, let us know. Or any particular question not yes. that we can necessarily ask it, depending on what it is. I don't think we can ask Vargas much. I don't think his English is that good yet. But, I mean, you're pretty good at Duolingo, so you could probably just converse with him. Zoran Basong got in this one. What do we Horn think Rose. of him? What do we think of our third string left back getting some clock early He's on? an intimidating specimen, I'll tell you that. He's a big guy. I thought he played pretty well. He's big? Yeah, it's like built. Built, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, solid frame on yeah. him. Yeah, He looked good, and also Memo Rodriguez got into the game. Memo got in there. I keep screwing up and saying. Did oh. one or two little decent things. Had a shot or two. Got yeah, booed by the crowd. <laughs> yes, mercilessly. <laughs> you know, that's actually should be a high point for somebody to get booed by Houston. Houston. <laughs> and it's like he didn't ask to leave. They got rid of him, didn't they? Send him to, well, he ended up in USL. That's dirty. What do you boo somebody coming back that you got rid of? <laughs> Anything to shake this, but I'm in. My foot, got me drinking. My foot, got me drinking.